Hello and welcome to another installment of Remote Kin Stretch with the Fitness Alchemists. I'm Hannah. I'm Will. <laughs> this is Will. Uh, we're going to take you through a little, uh, another cars circuit today. And we're going to be integrating our breath specifically with these cars, working on some ways to expand our breathing capacities and see how that helps us interact with those tight edges and places where we might want to gather and harness more range of motion. We're gonna warm up quickly here with some spinal cars. You can do these from tall kneeling or standing. Have your knees or your feet a little bit wide, hips with distance wide, so you can get a good pinch of the floor to stabilize your lower half. Everything from the belt buckle down should not move. Everything above that belt buckle, we're gonna to try to involve our whole spine here. So you're gonna begin by peeling yourself down, imagining that spine as a fruit roll up stuck to the wall, peeling one vertebra at a time down until you're as round as you can be without losing your butt squeeze or feeling your butt move back. And then rotate to your right. When you can't squeeze out any more rotation, side bend on that right side and then extend, trying to get a little contribution from your full spine as you come into extension. Rotate to the left, side bend, and wrap yourself around. Go ahead and pass through, we'll go for another rep here. So same directions, rotating to the right. And this time, just try to find a little bit more range compared to your last time. One thing that can help with that is turning up your lower body tension. You can keep thinking about pinching the floor, squeezing your butt. When you get back around to the center, go ahead and rebuild your spine. Good. Reinvest in your lower body tension, squeeze your butt, pinch the floor, and then peel yourself down, getting a little bit of spinal flexion at each segment, rotate to the left. When you've squeezed out as much rotation as you can, side bend on that left side, and then extend. Get a little contribution from each segment of your spine. Rotate, side bend, wrap around to the front and pass through. Keep rotating back over. As you go through this second rep, try to get a little bit more range in each direction. Make sure you're breathing. Our breath really facilitates spinal movement. So if you catch yourself holding your breath, Go ahead and take a new one. Plenty of air so far. Okay, when you get back around to center, stack yourself back up tall. We're gonna do scapular cars next. You can stay standing if you're standing or kneeling if you're kneeling. Arms just down by the sides. You're gonna try not to let your hands wrap forward or back. If you have a middle seam on your pant, your middle finger should stay about on that middle seam. Good, brace through the midsection so nothing in your ribcage moves. Slide your shoulder blades up like a shrug. Pinch in towards the spine, down towards your back pockets, and then wide across your ribcage. Keep going in that same direction. You are on the clock. Doing your best to keep elbows straight. Tension through the midsection. And then searching for a little bit more range in those shoulder blades. Can you smoothly connect all those dots? Can you squeeze out a little bit more range in each direction? Pause wherever you are and reverse direction. Good. Breathing in there somewhere. making your circle a little bit bigger each time maybe a little bit smoother each time if you notice there are places where your movement speeds up and slows down keep trying to find a nice continuous one mile per hour cadence for five four three two and one wherever you are let that go all right, we're gonna practice a little bit of the breathing techniques that we're gonna work here. And we're gonna do that just from lying on our backs. So comfortable position, knees can be bent, feet can be flat, arms can be by your sides, or you can bring your hands onto your torso to get a little bit more feeling of your belly expanding and contracting. 
So we're gonna just start with a few big breaths in, working on really expanding and taking in as much air as you can. So go ahead and take a big breath in, filling your belly, filling your waist, filling your ribs. And once you're as full as you feel like you can be, just let it go. Easy, relaxed, exhale. Keep going here. Each breath in, try to fill a little more. See if you can take in a little bit more air, find some spaces that weren't participating to expand. Maybe the belly isn't really willing to let go and expand. You could focus on that for a few. Maybe you're not yet feeling expansion in your low waist ribs along the mat. You could focus on that for a few. Good, couple more here. Bigger and bigger breath each time. Allowing your head to rest, allowing your neck to be easy. Good, and then on your next inhale, take that big breath in. Exhale as normal. And then towards the end of that exhale, See if you can keep squeezing a little bit more air out to make sure you've really vacuumed out every last little bit of air and then allow yourself to breathe in. Fill, 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 fill. And again, exhale normally, but squeeze out a little bit more at the end. Feel that you can really squeegee out the last bits of toothpaste from the tube. Try this a couple more times. Allow yourself to fill as that vacuum opens up and then keep filling. Exhale. As you get to the end of the exhale, words are hard. Keep squeezing to get all of the air out one more time like this. Enjoy that rush of air as the vacuum opens up. And then exhale to squeegee, squeegee, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Active muscular squeeze all that air out of your body. And then relax it. Good. Yes. So the muscles that help us with breathing can be trained like any other muscle in the body. All right. For this segment, you're going to want to move towards a door frame or the corner of a wall. Um, Will's going to use this column here. We're going to be working on finding a stretch in the chest tissues and you want to place your elbow about your shoulder height a little bit higher this is a variable you can play with if you want to find something that opens up a pleasant stretch for you um, you can also be standing we're kneeling for the video so we can get it in the frame from here you're going to bias a stretch by turning the t-shirt logo and the belt buckle away from that stationary arm and trying to open up some stretch through here. Take a deep breath in and a relaxed exhale. As you breathe in, try to breathe in to where you feel that stretch happening, but also keep that idea that we were working on on the floor of filling and expanding and taking in more air. You're on the clock for this. No need to count your breaths. What I want you to feel here is that you are taking in the biggest breath that you can, <sighs> letting it go in a relaxed fashion, and feeling into how that stretch sensation evolves. As things evolve, if you feel more slack present itself, you can bias deeper into the stretch. You might also start to feel certain fibers of the tissue come alive as the ones that are really holding tight. So see if there's a way to lean into those that biases your stretch a little more in the specific tissues that you need. Last 10 seconds here. Good, maybe one more really big breath. One more relaxed exhale. Good, beautiful. Okay, go slow, start to unwind, take yourself away. And then we're gonna go into a glenohumeral car to capture that active range. So just like the warm up, cutting across, coming up to your ear, internally rotating. See if you can utilize that new length that you opened up as you reach behind you. Good. 
We'll run these for time as well. So I want you to find your one mile per hour pace. Keep moving back and forth through the shoulder car, keeping your ribs knitted in the front, keeping your t-shirt logo facing forward, and really playing with how far back can you reach behind you. How does your overhead range as you come by the ear feel a little different? Smoothly carving through slightly denser than normal air, somewhere between that jello and wet cement consistency. Last 10 seconds. Wherever you get to in your rep is great. Five. Four, three, two, one. Beautiful. All right, coming back towards your wall. New arm on. Elbow slightly higher than the shoulder joint. But again, that's a variable you can play with. And then start to bias a stretch by turning the chest away from that fixed elbow point. And here again, I want you to find a pleasant stretch. So I don't need you to be at your absolute screaming end range. If you're more experienced and you wanna to go to more towards that edge, you certainly can. But generally we want you to find a nice pleasant stretch. No pinched pain, burning, anything like that. From here, start your breath pattern. Big breath in. <sighs> Relaxed exhale. Full breath in. Relaxed exhale. Let this stretch sensation evolve as your breathing shifts your internal state. You might find that you're able to turn a little further away from that arm. You might find that you're not. Either one is totally fine. Just keep checking in with yourself and keep seeing what your options feel like, how your tissues are shifting. Last 30 seconds here, big breath in. Oh, relaxed. Exhale. You're doing so well. Feeling your stretch. Working with your breath. Allowing things to shift. Beautiful. Last five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly back out of that stretch. Taking your time. Move away from the wall enough that you'll have free range of motion to move through your shoulder. Deep breath in, create a good stable midsection, commit to your t-shirt logo facing forward, and then start your shoulder cars, glenohumeral cars. Exploring that new space. How far behind you can you reach? How much more rotation might be available of the arm? How close to your ear can you get? How far across your chest can you get? And of course, chest tissue will change that for everyone, depending on what you have going on there. Keep breathing as you move, carving through that denser than normal air. Nice team, last 15 seconds. Can you make it a little bigger, a little smoother? Cover more territory without letting your spine contribute? Three, two, one. Wherever you are, let that go. We're gonna now come into a figure four position. So that means you're gonna have one leg out in front of you. You may need a towel or a pillow, It'll be handy to have. So here's what we're looking for. We're gonna to try to bias a stretch in the underside of the leg of that straight leg. And straight is relative. I'd like you to have a little bit of bend in your knee. We're searching for a stretch really in the belly of all that hamstring stuff. So we want to have the knee slightly unlocked, 
the heel planted into the floor. And then you're gonna fold yourself forward, but you're also gonna think about reaching your belly button or your belt buckle towards that kneecap or even towards that toe to bow a little bit more of a stretch. Now, if you found a great stretch here, hang out, just enjoy. If you're troubleshooting the, tr the leg, couple options. You can see Will's propped himself up with a little pillow here. That's a great option. If this hip tightness is preventing you from finding the stretch here, you could also stretch that leg out and just lean a little bit more towards the leg in question. And then last but not least, you could try elevating your hips on your pillow and then playing around with the non-working leg position until you can find a nice stretch through that straight leg. So hunt around, be your own detective, feel out where you get a good amount of stretch in the back of thigh tissues of that straight-ish leg, where you feel like you can generally relax. We need you to be in a position that you can relatively relax here and really get into a nice deep stretch. And then we're gonna have you on the clock for some breathing. We're gonna use the big breath in, relaxed breath out that we sampled on the floor in this strange position. So it'll feel a little different. Go for it. Start taking a big breath in, filling in as much air as you can, and then just a relaxed and complete exhale, but no need to squeegee. Try to let the exhale be very relaxed. The air just rejoins the other air in the world. Find your own rhythm with the breathing here. Each breath in, trying to fill your belly, fill your waist, fill your ribs, your chest, and then just let it go. You're about halfway through. As you keep finding those big inhales, relaxed exhales, see how that affects the tension you feel in your muscles. Are things starting to melt? Are you getting a little bit more slack from your muscle tissues? Could you take up that slack and reestablish a deeper stretch sensation? Couple more big breaths here. Good, and let that go. And just feel how that stretch sensation feels, different to when you first got into the position. You can just breathe normally. Check into that sensation. And then slowly back yourself away. Good. All right, we're gonna follow that up right away with some hip cars for that same leg. So if you've got your pillow handy or a towel, you can use that as a pillow. The leg that was just stretching is gonna be on top for some hip side lying hip cars. Take a deep breath in, brace your midsection, create an upper body tension strategy that helps you stay steady, and then start to pull your knee towards your chest, that top knee, as close as you can get it without changing the shape of your spine, and then push that leg up towards the ceiling. Start to twist to the sole of the foot points behind you, and then kick back. Coming down and around. When you get good amount of contact between your thighs, go ahead and reverse direction. And we'll keep tick-tocking back and forth through our hip car here, finding your one mile per hour pace, and specifically trying to feel, can you pull your knee towards your chest a little bit more as you go through that phase, and take advantage of that space that you opened up in the hamstring stuff with your breathing and stretching. Keep breathing. Last five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Okay, bring yourself into figure four with the other leg outstretched. And again, one side will not be like the other, so you can run through some of those similar checkpoints. Does your bent knee need to be a little bit supported by a pillow? Do you need to stretch it out a little more straight? Do you need to actually sit your butt up on something in order to be able to pitch forward and find a stretch 
through the back of thigh tissues, keeping a little bend here in the knee. Good. Finding your stretch, hunting around. Can you push your belly button a little further forward? And then start your breathing. Big breath in, relaxed exhale. Bigger breath in. Can you take in more air? Relaxed exhale. You're on the clock. Find your own rhythm with this. Filling yourself up with delicious air and then letting it go. Commit to that breath practice and keep checking in with your sensation of stretch. Is it shifting? Is it changing? Are you able to get deeper in? Is your body giving you a little bit more permission? Last 15 seconds, keep breathing. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Take a moment here to just let your breathing quiet. Check into your sensation now versus when you first started. And then slowly walk yourself back from there. And make your way into a side lying hip car position with the leg that was stretching on top and ready to move to dynamically explore and utilize that range. Deep breath in. Create a good abdominal brace. Strong upper body tension strategy into the floor. And then pull your top knee towards your chest. Good. When you can't get any more of that, push your leg up towards the ceiling. When you run out of range there, start to turn so the sole of your foot pushes behind you. Driving back, coming down and around until the thighs match up again. When you get good contact between the thighs, pause and reverse direction. Keep tick-tocking back and forth through your hip car, maintaining your one mile per hour pace pulling yourself into each range of motion, each segment of that hip car actively. Keep breathing around your braced abdominals. For your last 15 seconds here, could you turn up the intensity of your midsection and your upper body bracing strategy to buy that hip just a little bit more freedom. Five, four, nice. Three, two, and one. Beautiful. Okay, next we're gonna apply our breath pattern work to our spine, a couple different spine shapes. So we're gonna start in a baby cobra position. Propping the chest up a little bit. Yeah, so you're going to place your elbows under your armpits and have your belt buckle on the floor. And here, a variable you can play with is how far apart your legs are. Um, for some, it might feel more relaxed through the low back to widen the legs a little bit. Um, for others, it might feel good to have them closer together. So experiment with that and see what's feeling the best for you. And then here, think of lifting your t-shirt logo forward. So you're in a little active lift here and then start to see what your ability is to find that large breath. Big breath in, relaxed exhale. Good, you're on the clock. Big breath in, relaxed exhale. Each exhale, see if you can imagine your spine being willing to move a little bit more into that extension curve. We'll just got a nice adjustment, which will feel like your t-shirt logo coming forward and up, Maybe a little bit more contraction in the muscles between the shoulder blades. And just keep checking in that you're not gathering a lot of tension in your low back here. We want to create movement extension in the upper back and between the shoulder blades. You've got 15 seconds left for this breath. Good. Big breath in. On your exhale, 
seeing if you can find more spaciousness, more extension, more lift of the chest, more wideness of the collarbones. Three, two, one, good. Slowly come out of that. And then you're gonna sit back into a child's pose of sorts. Now, if child's pose is not your jam and your knees are not willing to flex into that much amount of flexion, you can put a pillow behind your heels. That'll take you out of some. If that still feels like a lot, you can just be in quadruped and round your spine. You can keep your bum up in the air and round your low back here. But we're looking for a position where the low back is rounded and you can generally feel fairly relaxed into your position. So hunt around and find that for yourself now. See if you can let your head rest somewhere, if you can let your shoulders relax a little bit, allow your hips to relax and settle, and then begin your breathing. Big breath in, relaxed exhale. Big breath in, Relaxed exhale, and you might feel that your breath in space capacity is different in this position. That's okay. Try to get the biggest breath in that you can find. As you keep working with this breath, keep inviting your low back to round a little bit more. Maybe your tailbone can sink a little heavier to the floor. Maybe your chest can sink heavier towards your thighs. Maybe your hips can give up some of their tension as they realize that you're safe in this position. Last 10 seconds, get a few more deep breaths in here. Good, and then slowly climb your way out of that. Just noticing if you feel lightheaded from being head down. Good, make your way onto your hands and knees now. And we're gonna put our full spinal movement together, that sort of round shape and extension shape. So from here, find your tailbone and tuck your tail under, feeling your belt buckle scoop up away from the floor then your belly button, then your lowest ribs, middle of the chest, top of the t-shirt logo, collarbones start to hide, and you're fully round. Take a big breath here, big breath in. Exhale, can you get any rounder into that shape? Beautiful, and then stay round through your upper back, poke your tailbone up to the ceiling, feel your belt buckle reach towards the floor, then your belly button, then your lowest ribs, middle of the chest, collarbones start to lift, throat lifts, and finally face comes up. Good. Keep making your way between those two shapes, the round and the arch, moving from tail to head, doing your best to find as much segment by segment movement as you can. Will's doing a great job of this. And keep breathing. Anywhere you find a hitch in your spinal giddy up, as it were, that's a great place to pause, take a full breath in, and then a relaxed exhale to encourage you to keep moving in that same direction. Good, keep breathing, keep moving, trying to get a little more specific each pass. Three, two, one, give that a rest. 